I have a feeling that every company is agile now, <laughs> especially big companies, senior managers, directors constantly telling us we are working in an agile way. We are currently in an agile transformation. Agile is the number one priority for this company. We need to get this to work. But I do a lot of training. I do a lot of training with these companies. And I'm always surprised to see people who have been using Agile for quite a few months, even some years, still don't get the basics. They still don't understand it. They, feel that, they think that Agile is about fun. <laughs> Agile is about not doing anything at work, no planning, no documentation. <sighs> What is this? In this video, we're going to talk about six myths. I use the term myths because they all seem to come from a partial understanding or a complete misunderstanding of Agile. Let's not waste any more time. Myth number one, Agile equals Scrum. Agile and Scrum, same thing. I want to start with this myth because I often hear people saying we are using Agile project management, the Agile way of working, when they truly mean we are using Scrum. <laughs> same thing for this video. Some of you might have clicked on this video believing that I was going to talk about Scrum, some common Scrum myths. But nope, we're going to talk about everything Agile, not only Scrum. Scrum is a framework and process in which teams can develop and manage work. Agile is way more than that, bigger than that. It's a mindset, it's a way of working, a set of values, a set of principles. People can use Scrum as per the Scrum Guide 2020, but still might not use some Agile principles and values. Scrum is part of Agile, like other methodologies or frameworks. Kanban, part of Agile, similar to Scrum, but Kanban is not Agile. So why do we say Scrum is Agile? Agile is way more than that. Agile, the most important thing in Agile, I believe, is this mindset part. Changing this mindset and learning this wrong way of working that we have used for years and decades. Myth number two, there's no documentation in Agile. One of the core values of Agile is we value working software over comprehensive documentation. When people read this statement, it can, they can misunderstand it. <laughs> they understand, most people, when they read this statement, they understand that there's no documentation in Agile. <laughs> but it's obviously false. In Agile, you can have as much documentation as you want. Documentation in Agile is treated as a deliverable, same as any other feature, any other user story. If a team feels that the documentation will bring value, the documentation is estimated, is scheduled, is planned, and the team works on the documentation. Same thing as a user story, same thing as a feature or something that the team is building. Where Agile doesn't like <laughs> documentation is when communicating. Agile doesn't like that. If you want to communicate, the best way to communicate, the more effective, the most effective way to communicate in an Agile team, in the team and outside the team also is face to face. This is one of the core Agile principles. If you're using documentation to communicate with people in the team and outside of the team, mm, that's not very agile. <laughs> Myth number three, there's no planning in agile. I'm often surprised when I hear that, that there's no planning in agile, because when you compare that to the classic waterfall project management model, agile, way more planning. I believe there's way more planning in agile, but the difference in waterfall, in the waterfall model, you do planning intensive planning in the beginning, done by a few people, maybe some managers, some tech leads, some engineering leads do the planning. But in Agile, you do planning consistently throughout the development at each stages. A lot of planning on a daily basis, and it's done by the team, by the whole team. There are some common sessions, events, meetings that talk about planning in Agile. First, release planning, where the team they sit together to plan the future, predict the future, build a roadmap, a vision, a single team or multiple teams sitting together to plan this. Second, the sprint planning or the iteration planning. Maybe your sprints two weeks, one month, but you, if it's two weeks, every two weeks, you're gonna meet. You're gonna meet to do planning, to plan what the team will accomplish. 
in the next two weeks. And then there's a daily scrum. The daily scrum, every single day when using scrum or the daily stand-up, doesn't matter what you call it, the daily scrum, you plan every single day. The goal of a daily scrum is to craft together as a team a plan for the day. What the team will work on together today to reach a goal. That's the goal of a daily scrum. Free planning sessions. <laughs> Compare that to waterfall. The problem that I have with waterfall, the classic model, very static, very static. You build a plan based on what you know. And you don't know that a lot. There's a tons of uncertainties at the beginning of a plan because you're doing a plan six months earlier and you're expected to have a release date and meet this release date six months later. <laughs> oh, come on, come on. A plan needs to change every single day because things happen every single day. That's the real world. Agile is not about not doing a plan. Agile is about not doing a static plan. Agile plans are always changing, always changing based on the information that we currently have. And the closer we get to the release date, the more information we get, the more, the better the prediction of a plan, the end date, the release dates of the plans will be accurate. Myth number four, there's a right size for a user story. Every team is different. There's no right size for a user story. Get over it. <laughs> I have some basic rules. Two rules when crafting a user story. First, it needs to be small enough to be delivered soon, maybe in two weeks, the size of a sprint, but not months. And second, it needs to bring value to a customer, to the company. That's our basic rules. Now, every team estimates, writes stories differently because they have different skills, different people. They have different ways of working together. That's the power of Agile. There's no clear processes, structures, guidelines that you need to follow, that you have to follow, the rules that you have to follow. Nope. It's a mindset. Even if you're using Scrum, it's quite open. They tell you some guidelines on how to use it, but they don't tell you exactly what to do. Each team different. Each team will estimate and write stories differently. And even within the team, let's say you have a team, a new team, new to Scrum, new to Agile, they will have a way of writing stories and estimate stories six months later, totally different. That's why Agile is powerful, because we are always improving and it's always changing and everything around, even the release date, the product, everything reflects this improvement, this growth, this change. So even within a team, the way of crafting and estimating a story will change as people grow in skills, capabilities. Myth number five, Agile can't be scaled. It's true, but most Agile methodologies, frameworks, work best with small teams. Example, Scrum. But doesn't mean that you can't scale it, that you can't apply it in the whole organization. Just means that you start small with small teams and then you get experience and then you move on to the next team and you keep going like that till the whole organization is using Agile or Scrum or the other methodology. Remember, Agile is a mindset, a list of principles, a list of values, very different from a command and control approach. And the problem is that when Agile teams interact and collaborate with non-Agile teams, it can be hard because it's totally different in terms of mindset. There's a fully cross-functional, self-managed, self-organized team talking to a team controlled completely by the project manager or a manager somewhere. <laughs> Obviously, hard to interact. And when you scale Agile throughout an organization, you can't possibly make everyone Agile at the same time. You need to start small. And when you start small, this interaction between Agile and non-Agile teams, hard to do. That's why you need to start really gradually with small teams. You get experience, you get knowledge, you, get, uh, you monitor the engagement, you take all this experience and you move on to transforming the next team. In Agile, using Scrum, using Kanban, and again, you get this experience and transform another team and another team, and you repeat the process until Agile spreads like wildfire <laughs> throughout the organization. Myth. 
Number six, in agile, people do whatever they want. In agile, <laughs> teams are self-managed, self-organized. They decide what to build, how to build it, and who builds it. A complaint that I hear often managers, upper management, middle management, directors telling me is that if you don't micromanage someone, this person won't work. <laughs> well, first, if the person doesn't want to work, even if you micromanage this person and the person doesn't want to work, they will find a way to be lazy, to not work. So your point doesn't make any sense. The goal of self-organized teams is to get better engagement, more motivation, and bring the decision-making power where it's supposed to be in the team, not with a manager somewhere who doesn't know the product, doesn't have the skills to develop the product, who knows best about the product and how a team should work. The team, not the manager, command and controlling or micromanaging people in the team. And at the end of the day, if people are more engaged, then they will be because they have all the decision-making power. They decide their destiny. They decide what to build, how to build it, and who builds it. They will be more motivated. And at the end of the day, they will build a more valuable product and satisfy the customer. In the long run, a self-managed team will always beat in terms of delivering value to the customer. Will always beat a micromanaged and command and controlled team. Which brings me to my next point. If you want more tips, insights on Agile Scrum personal growth, click on the video that stands out the most on the screen right now and I'll see you in a few seconds.